Hey, R3X, how you doing? How about you introduce yourself? Hello, I'm AMD's Ryzen 3 1300X. I'm a quad-core processor with a base clock of 3.5 GHz with a max turbo clock of 3.7 GHz. I have 2 MB of L2 cache with 8 MB of an L3 cache for a total of 10 MB. I am fully unlocked and I have a TDP of 65 watts. Awesome, let's get into some testing. All right, so to start things off, we are going to be putting you in the Prime A320M-K motherboard. Well, that doesn't support overclocking, does it? Yes, I know. I understand that. But it is the cheapest board, and seeing that you're one of the cheaper processors, I wanted to go ahead and throw you in there. Well, if you're going with the cheapest board, why didn't you get the 1200? Well, I assume that if we're going to go ahead and go with a board that doesn't have overclocking, I figured the higher core clock would be the best plan. That makes sense. But why wouldn't you just save the $20 and buy the $1,200 and then pick up an AB350? Not an AB350, but yeah, I understand. A B350 would probably be the best plan, but this is just what we have. So luckily, the board does support up to 3200 MHz on the memory overclock, and we're going to be putting you with some A-data memory. It's the XPGZ1 that is clocked at 3200 MHz and should give you a good boost in performance. Sounds great. Yeah, and we're going to go ahead and put you up against Intel's i3-6100. I can handle that. I actually have true four cores. That is interesting. I was wondering, so you only have four cores, but you don't use any SMT. What was the reasoning behind that, or do you know? Yeah, the reasoning behind that was because we wanted to have a full CCX. Well, that makes complete sense now. I'm glad that we got that cleared up. How about we go ahead and get started with some benchmarks then? To start things off, I'd like to take a look at your Cinebench single-threaded score because that's where I feel like we've seen the weakest performance from the Ryzen processor. So is that cool? Yeah. All right, so if you can see here, your single-thread score is actually right on par with this 6100, which is quite good. And your multi-threaded score is incredible. Obviously, using a full CCX and going with that four quad core or four true cores was the best plan of action. Your multi-threaded score in Cinebench puts you at a whopping 558. Compared to Intel 6100, which is a 399, that's really impressive. But how does it translate into gaming? How about we take a look at some 1080p gaming in the titles that were most requested on Twitter when I tweeted out. Sounds good. Alright, so to start things off, let's take a look at Deus Ex Mankind Divided at 1080p with very high settings. We'll see that the i3 actually had a huge dip down to a 5.9 FPS minimum. I'm assuming this has to do with the CPU since the GPU we used was the same on both ends with the GTX 1063 gigabyte. Now you had a very respectable min of 39.2 with an average of 46.4 falling a little short to the to Intel's 48.1 and then you guys matched the max with 60.2. Next we have your Fire Strike score, which is quite interesting actually. We're going to go ahead and take a look here. Overall, you just completely destroyed the 6100, but when we take a look at some of the graphics tests, it does look like there is something going on possibly with your single core performance in games. We see graphics test 1, you lost out to the 6100, and the same was on graphics test 2 where you lost out but not by much and your multi-threaded kind of performance should make up for the rest of this when we start running applications in the background now of course the physics test was just a complete and utter destruction of intel's counterpart yeah i know i'm a cute little guy that can freaking kick ass yes you are Alrighty, so taking a look at GTA 5 at 1080p with very high settings, your minimum actually fell a little bit below the 6100 with a min of 10.43. Your average was pretty much right on par at 87 with the i3-6100, and your max fell short by 5 frames to the 6100. But overall, we're looking at about the same performance in GTA 5. But, what can we say about PlayerUnknown? Battlegrounds. 
Yeah, this one's one that everybody wants to play lately, so I've been working really hard on making sure I can play it smoothly. And that you did, sir, that you did. While on the 6100 I was having a ton of stuttering issues and pretty much unplayable with drops down to 14 FPS, you did have a pretty awful min drop of 24, but overall you were actually smooth and playable throughout my entire experience. So if I was going to be playing PUBG, I would definitely go with the R3 1300X over the 6100 any day. I do think that this game most likely is a little bit more multi-threaded heavy and can actually utilize all four cores and that's why we're seeing your performance here stay a lot smoother. Props. Finally, I really wanted to take a look at what we could do with a game that is super competitive and high frame rates. We have been seeing 240 hertz monitors released recently with 1080p resolution. So we decided to go, or I decided to go ahead and throw you at Rocket League and see if your kind of mediocre single thread score compared to the 6100 in things like fire strike translated to rocket league as well and surprisingly it looks like the minimum was a 195 for the intel while you maintained a minimum of 213 and pretty impressively enough you maintained 240 frames per second on the average so you would be looking really good with a 240 hertz monitor especially if it was free sync etc etc you probably are the most competitive chip on the market for games like rocket league awesome thanks for having me on the show thanks for coming on the show i hope you enjoyed going ahead and doing all this work for me it was pretty awesome we'll have a couple more slides coming up i did want to mention we did run so a time spy as well where when we're talking about DirectX 12 performance in particular, it looks like your single thread goes ahead and does beat out the 6100, where you just completely swiped or <laughs> wiped the board with the 6100 in all graphics tests and of course CPU tests. So you say for $129 I'm a good deal? Well, I think that at the end of the day, what I would really go with personally is picking up a 1200 and a B350 board. So I think that I would lean towards your little brother, sister over there instead of you in particular. Aw, man, you're just going to get rid of me? Well, if I get rid of you, we'll be doing a giveaway or something like that. So don't worry. We'll find a good home for you. Thanks for watching, guys. This was a little bit less campy, I guess. Yeah than the Vega build, at least it'll still be uh, personable. And I didn't have all the memes that I really wanted to do. I, I just really genuinely enjoyed this proc. I think it's one of the better procs on the market for the price. The R3 1200, like I said, is one that I really would prefer to go with and a B350 board. The reasoning behind that is because you could overclock the B350 and overclock the 1200 on the B350 and get very similar, if not better performance than you would see if it's locked down by an A320 and the 1300X. Now, I'm gonna be trying to get my, my hands on a 1200 and put these two chips head to head. I think I am gonna do like a stock 1300x on an a320 compared to like an overclocked 1200 on a budget b350 board i know that you can pick up the b350 boards for about 69 dollars here and there i'll probably be going with the msi so if you're interested in that please hit the sub button and the notification button so you'll see when i upload and until next time i'll see you next tuesday